Well, hello to you and welcome to The Little Talks with Dr. Candice Jones. Um, go ahead and grab your Bible. We're going to be reading out of 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 9 through 14. And I think I want to call this little talk a lesson of grace. A lesson of grace. So while you are looking for 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 9 through 14, I just want to go ahead and define grace. What is grace? We need to understand grace. It's imperative that we understand what grace means. Grace is when you are given something that you do not deserve. All right, so let's go ahead and read verses 9 through 14. So we're reading about a leper named Naaman. Naaman desires above all to be healed from leprosy, okay? Um, so he finds himself at the prophet's house. He's at the man of God's house. Um, and he's about to knock on the door and get the man of God to heal him. So in verse 9, here we go. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. Then Elisha sent him a messenger who said, Go wash seven times in the Jordan and your skin will be restored and you will be clean. But Naaman got angry and left saying, I was telling myself, he will surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and wave his hand all over the place and cure the skin disease. Aren't Abana and Farfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be clean? So he turned and left in a rage. But his servants approached him and said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more should you do it when he only tells you wash and be clean? So Naaman went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, according to the command of the man of God. Then his skin was restored and became like the skin of a small boy, and he was clean. This is a lesson of grace. What do we learn from Mr. Naaman? Naaman was prideful and he was ungrateful, but he was given a healing. He was given instructions that would lead to his healing. But because he was prideful, how was he prideful? Well, he was prideful in that he felt like, number one, he felt like the man of God should have came himself to seek him and tell him about the healing. He felt like he should do it a certain type of way. Number two, he wanted a better river to wash in. Like the Jordan was like beneath him. So he was prideful. Also, he was ungrateful. He didn't immediately even do what the messenger said. He was super angry. The Bible says he was in a rage. Um, his servant had to talk some sense into him. He was like, seriously, you know, if he told you something grand to do, wouldn't you have done that? But you don't want to do this simple thing that he's telling you to do so that you could be clean, so that you could be healed. And so when he, he got it like that, he was like, okay, well, I'm going to do it. And he did it. So let's go back to grace. Here's the grace in this situation. He received his healing, even though he had a bad attitude. God's been giving grace to people since the very beginning. That same grace is available to you now. I think the most notable gracious act of Father God is that he gave his only son in exchange for all of us sons who would become sons later, actually, after we accept Jesus and what he did. But he gave his son. He gave his son so that his son could take away the punishment of the sins that we committed. 
That's grace. Because remember, grace is something that you do not deserve. And we did not deserve the salvation that Jesus died to give us. But yet and still, he gave it to us. And it is for us. It is a free gift of salvation. So where do you stand today? You know, have you been dealing with, you know, being prideful? Have you been dealing with being ungrateful? Have you been dealing with having a bad attitude? Yet and still, God takes care of you. That's grace. That's grace because he takes care of us all. You know, not that there's no consequence for being prideful and ungrateful. But even in the story of Naaman, he received his healing in spite of. See, the Bible says God gives good gifts to his children. And that he does. So where do you stand? Do you need to make sure that you're God's child? Do you need to make sure that you're not allowing too much time to pass between you repenting for things like being ungrateful and prideful and having a bad attitude? You know, we all need to be repentant. And we need to keep that repentant heart. So if that's you and you need to repent right now, or you need to just go ahead and give yourself to Jesus, you need to accept what he's done for you. Now, I said before that it's salvation is a free gift. But this walk with Christ, oh no, it's not free. It costs you something. It costs you giving up your will in exchange for the will of God. It costs you. But hey, when you think about paying a price, the Bible asks an amazing question. It says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? So basically it's saying, you know, what kind of price are you paying? Are you willing to pay, you know, to be able to do what it is that you want to do instead of doing what God asks you to do? Because see, when you do things your way, when you go the way of what your flesh desires to do, remember what your flesh desires to do, what my flesh desires to do is always in opposition with what God desires for us to do. So when you go your own way, you're asking for a penalty of hell, death, and the grave. You're asking for it. But when you put what you want to do on the cross, like you kill that thing, like you put what God wants you to do over and above what you want to do, then you're on the right path. And God wants me to live a just and upright life before him. God wants me to share the good news about what Jesus did with everybody who will listen. He wants the same for you. So those of you who are ready to receive that free gift of salvation, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. You died and took the punishment for my sins so that I did not have to. You did not stay dead, but you rose to life victorious over everything that could ever come against me. I choose you today to be the Lord of my life forever. Amen. It's just as simple as that. If you prayed that prayer with me, I want to tell you, welcome to the family. You need to do a couple of things at this time. And one is know that everything you've ever done that was not righteous before God, he's just forgiving you of it as you said that prayer. So now you're like this with God. You're inseparable. You up close, nice and tight. And so you need to maintain that relationship with him. When you mess up and you will mess up, repent repent means to change your mind about how you feel about what you've done wrong and make a concerted effort to turn away from that type of living and live according to the word of god how do we live according to the word of god yeah we got to read it and yeah we need to find a church home a ministry that is bible believing 
that is interested in growing you, helping you grow in your relationship with God. Okay? Until you are secure in it that you can lead others to a relationship with God. That's all for now. I will see you next time on The Little Talks where we will explore all things relevant to life and learning of the things of God. And so before you go, if you said that prayer with me, let me know that you prayed with me by sending me an email. Email me at 213.talks at gmail.com. That's 213.talks at gmail.com. I would love to hear from all the people that these videos are impacting.